So in my last video, I talked about real-time strategy games and how much I really enjoyed them. Because of that, I decided to go through and actually complete the campaign for StarCraft II. I'd never beat that game before. I've always been a huge fan of StarCraft and StarCraft II, and I really love playing the multiplayer with my friends and versus competitive with other people. The StarCraft II campaign is completely free to play. So, if you've never played StarCraft, you can download the game and play it for free. The entire first campaign is free, and there's so much going on with it, with just the story alone, that I really think you will enjoy it if you've never played it before. All the Dominion bases in the area. Hopefully we can block all transmissions long enough for him to do that. We can't risk word of this getting back to Core Hall. How much do we know about this Odin? It's an experimental super heavy siege walker designed for prolonged frontline combat. Very powerful. Great. Even Tychus can't wreck it then. Here they go. Go, go, go! Another thing I really liked was that whenever you selected a mission, you would get a little video description about what you were going to do and what the plan was when the attacks really and fighting really began. That was really cool. I suppose my only problem with it is that after a while it got kind of old. I didn't really want everything to be spoiled and it just took up a little more time than maybe was necessary. Every time you started a new mission, you would get a new a unit introduced to you and you'd get to use that on that particular mission. And the whole mission would be de designed around that particular you know, fight and that unit, which was great. The trouble, I suppose, is that after about halfway through the campaign, I didn't really want to have to deal with more units and more unique units. I just wanted to deal with the ones that I had. And that whole philosophy of introducing a new unit was really all the way up until the very end of the game. So, for what it's worth, I never really felt like I got to just use the units that I had. I, I was always having to juggle some new new thing. And after a while, it got kind of you know, cumbersome having to manage all the different types of units. But either way, it was a good, good balance of um, cool m missions, great story, and new and old units coming back to really serve the purpose of the story. And I really love that. Ever wonder why minks don't just send him ghosts to kill ya? You've been a thorn in his side for a long time. Assassinating me just turned me into a martyr. <laughs> He'd never be rid of me then. He needs to kill my reputation first. Very good. You think clearly despite your hate for him. Of course, his patience has got limits too. Tread careful, Mr. Rena. Someone on this ship is already working for Minsk. I can feel it. Inside the Hyperion, you can click around and talk to different people, watch the news. This is Kate Lockwell reporting from UNN headquarters on Core Hall. Let's go to Donnie Vermillion on special assignment. Kate, I'm very pleased to be talking to General Horace Warfield. General, I understand that Dominion forces will soon be showing off their newest weapon. And, of course, upgrade your units and structures to make them better at war. And it's just really cool to see all the personality that's put into the game on the side besides the actual missions themselves. Because even though it's not really like actual content of the game, it still helps to make the whole world feel far more real. And I really enjoyed that. They even have a cool little arcade in the back if you want to waste your time doing little arcade games. So I really appreciate all the extra side stuff that they put to make the whole world feel more real. So maybe you're telling yourself, that's great, AC, but I've already played StarCraft 2. I'm not really interested in doing the campaign all over again. Hey, I totally understand that. But the multiplayer is still really wonderful. And if you haven't done multiplayer with other people, there are so many people in the leagues that are at your level or below your level that you shouldn't feel too afraid of going one-on-one -on -one with another player. And you'll learn a lot of great tactics and tips to really get the ball rolling and eventually you'll start 
ranking up and moving from Bronze League to Silver League and upwards to Gold and Diamond. Uh, I myself started in Bronze and I'm already in Silver and uh, if I play more I'm sure I can get myself back up into Gold where I was just a few years ago. And it's just really fun to know that your strategy, you know, took out your opponent and all that good stuff. Another really cool thing too about StarCraft 2 is all the custom maps that you can check out. So many great user-made uh, user levels are already there for you to take and you can check out some of these cool campaigns, full-fledged campaigns that people have made. And also I checked out this one that was neat. It was the entire Wings of Liberty campaign, but you get to do the entire experience with Zerg. And that was really cool. I did the first couple missions with with uh, the Zerg instead of the Terran, and it was kind of fun to see how that all changed the dynamic a little bit. And I don't know, I thought it was cool. I think that user-created content really is a needs to be, especially with real-time strategy games, a major feature that uh, if, if the real-time strategy game does not have it, then the game probably will suffer and die. Especially, it needs multiplayer, but also that user-created content so that people can check out and do their own thing. I found, if you want to play Among Us in StarCraft 2, you can play Among Us in StarCraft 2. I found Cat and Mouse from the old StarCraft 1 days. I found um, all sorts of really cool stuff. So, you really need to check it out. In particular, I found Warcraft 3 completely remade in the StarCraft 2 engine, which is just pff, crazy. And I played the first couple I played the first couple of missions of that too and I mean, it was amazing. So, you really ought to give it a try. It's all free to play. So, what's stopping you? Uh, if you need friends, hey, let me be your friend. Uh, I think that you'll really enjoy getting to know me and maybe we can play a couple matches uh, in the middle of the night or whatever and or on the weekends, that'd be fun, you know? can tell you I started playing the Zerg campaign wondering how were they going to make the story interesting because they wrap up so many great things in the first end of the in the Terran uh, finale that I was worried that they were not gonna have a, a very enticing story but lo and behold the first couple missions really gripped me and you get to feel the emotion behind a lot of the actions that uh, are taking place so, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what really happens in Heart of the Swarm. I don't remember really much of anything in the Heart of the Swarm. So, it will be a lot of fun to see what happens. And if I do beat that and enjoy it, I am sure that I will probably move on to the Legacy of the Void. And I'll give you my thoughts on that as well. But, like I said guys, let me know what your thoughts are on real-time strategy games, StarCraft 2, and um, Age of Empire 4, if I should check that out and uh, all that good stuff guys I really appreciate it please subscribe to the show let me know what your thoughts are in the comments and uh, like the video of course I'll catch you in the next video have a great day bye